Hi everybody, it's um, just about one o'clock and here I am again in my studio uh, for my daily, one of my daily live feeds here on Facebook. Um, and if you've been following me, you will know that I'm doing this every weekday at one o'clock um, to change up the day a little bit, to um, give my my own day some structure um, to hopefully inspire you that you might do something more creative with the the extra time that you've been given to provide um, kind of that silver lining in this awkward situation that we find ourselves in um, I want to keep in touch with everybody as much as I as much as I can and for me this was one way that I could do that and it gave me um, kind of it has given me it is giving me a kind of sense of purpose a good reason um, to get up get dressed put some makeup on try and deal with my hair my what's my hair what's everybody's hair gonna do when we can't get to hairdressers and you know I've been talking about silver lining over the last few days because I've called this piece here silver lining and yesterday afternoon I did finish this this bottom edge of silver that I said that I would um, so another silver lining, possibly, possibly one that I don't want, is um, that I'm definitely going to go more silvery over the next month or so, rather than the, the golden tones that I would have liked. Um, welcome everybody um, who've joined me now. Um, your names are flicking through quicker than I can, can respond to them. Maggie, Sue, hi, thanks for dropping in. Today what I wanted to talk to you about, because I have um, had a bit of a clear up in the studio, it's still a work in progress, hi Fiona, still a work in progress, but it does mean that I can um, fully stand up and I've created a bit of a display wall behind me and got my work on the wall. I like to put it up so that I can um, see the work from a distance, contemplate it, keep an eye on it, um, sometimes you just need to review and you need um, moments of self-critique and evaluation and you need to live with work for a while and so that is what I plan to do with silver lining I want to have it on the wall see it from a distance watch it every day compare it to my original drawing and then I'll be able to decide what I'm going to do next with that particular piece of work. Um, I'm not quite sure just yet. I'm really liking the bluey, cool tones, silvery tones that are in there. And mm, usually I put, put more natural threads through this, but I'm veering away from that at the moment. So I am just going to wait and see how my thoughts develop on that one. One of the things I've also been doing is I have pulled a big box of work out of um, the studio that is due to go back to the print and repeat students. So those of you or participants, those of you who don't know about print and repeat, I invited a collection of students who had learned silkscreen printing with me. Most of them had been on my accessible silkscreen printing workshop online. Some of them I taught face to face. And I invited them to produce five, up to five scarves using the techniques that they'd learned. So using silkscreen printing techniques using particularly dyes as opposed to printing inks and a collection of people um thanks Annette hello hi Vicky um a collection of people did just that and I got work from all over the world and I'm at the point now where it's it's exhibited in several different countries and I need to send it back to everybody. But before I did, I thought it was a good opportunity to show you some of the beautiful work. Um, 
I can't show you much printing over the coming weeks because most of my printing gear is elsewhere in another studio so I thought this was a good halfway measure um, they're not halfway measures that's a really poor poor choice of phrase they're beautiful pieces of work but I can't necessarily demo this for you but you can see the outcomes and what everybody has produced so brilliantly so I'm going to start I've collected a little pile of things together that I thought I'd like to talk about and um, this is one of Alice's pieces now I know that Alice is working this lunchtime because she works from home anyway um, so she can't be with us live at the moment but she will join us later and watch later because I will put this on my Facebook page. Um, this is one of Alice's scarves. I think she made four or five, but I picked this one out particularly because if I show it up close, can you see the lovely fabric, the lovely linen fabric that she has printed onto? It's given a beautiful texture to her print and it's quite a simple print that she's put on here. Um, in very uh, warm tones and the print is made by paper stenciling so she's cut out paper stencils and she's printed with Procyon dies now when you print with Procyon dies can you see how particularly here one colour overlays the other and because the Procyons are translucent the, the colours will show through one another when you overprint, you don't block out the colour below, but it shines through instead. So Alice has been able to utilise that fact here beautifully. And really lovely fabric and it feels lovely. It's got a really nice drape to it, so it'd be really lovely to wear. So thank you, Alice, for getting involved. All these people are also featured in um, the Print and Repeat book. Um, we created a, a lovely book and they put... They, they wrote stories of their, their journeys, um, their printing journeys and the way that they had kind of adapted their spaces so that they could print. So for instance, somebody printed in their greenhouse, somebody printed in their garage and made a print table on top of a freezer, a chest freezer. So there are lots of different ways that it can be done you don't need to have a studio you can actually do it in your in your kitchen now this is fiona's and i know fiona is watching i picked out this scarf of yours fiona because of the the very fine line details that you've got here and they're over printed over other stenciled imagery but these very fine details would be created with flour paste resist um, and flour paste printing. So you can coat a screen with a flour paste, scratch back into it and it leaves fine lines. So rather than printing with large blocks, you can create very fine lines of print, something that's a little bit more illustrative and um, Mm. You're, you're doing it in a positive way, if that makes sense. So where you scratch away at the flower is where the positive marks will print. When you're doing the, um, put this over my shoulder a minute, when you're doing the paper stenciling, you kind of work in the other way around because where you cut out a shape in the paper, where you take away something negative, you're, you're printing that negative space if that makes sense. So the flower paste resist gives you quite illustrative, or very illustrative, drawn marks. It's the closest thing that you can get um, without needing an exposure unit and lots of big equipment. It's the closest thing that you can get to making these lovely fine drawn lines. And if you, mm, difficult to see up really, really close, but they can look a little bit um, grainy and a little bit like charcoal or maybe even a, a very soft graphite mark so you can get very lovely lovely qualities with that so thank you Fiona for being involved I did see that Tanya was um, had signed in as well 
and this is one of Tanya's scarves. Um, Tanya and Fiona came to Italy actually last year to work with me in Italy. Now this is one of Tanya's. Can you see? Tanya's is featured on the front of the, the book. Um, now there are layers and layers and layers of print um, on this scarf. Very loose stencils and overlaying of colour. The translucency that I talked about in the dyes is really seen to good effect here because every time um, she's overlaid, the, the colour and the block of colour underneath has had an impact on the subsequent colours, if that makes sense. There's also some discharge printing on here, which takes the colour back out again. I mentioned discharge yesterday. Um, it's a really unfortunate name, but it's a colour reduction technique. And I'm going to do that on the quilt that I showed you yesterday so that I can complete the um, piece of work that I did on Janice Gunner's uh, African Quilt Workshop. So, Tanya's work, very lovely. Thank you for being involved, Tanya. Coming back to you shortly. Um, let me move on. This one is Bryony's, one of Bryony's. And Bryony's done a couple of things here. Let me show you. Now, I think this bit down here, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but this bit down here is done with um, breakdown printing. Can you see along this edge here? This is a thing called breakdown printing, getting these effects. And um, it's something that's slightly unpredictable, so I really like it for that fact. And again, it's something that you can only do with Procyon dyes, um, as opposed to pin, pr printing with pigments, you can only do this particular technique with Procyons and you paint directly onto uh, an open screen with with coloured dyes or um, thickened dyes and then squeegee through. Okay and she's, Bryony has mixed that with stencil printing as well. So on every scarf in the collection I think students have used a whole range of different techniques not just not just restricted themselves to one let me move on bear with as they say this is a big bold one i'll show you a couple of from annette hang on this is annette annette i don't know if you're watching you said you were going to at lunchtime so this is a really bold piece So really, really striking, strong colours. And the, um, if you see it up close, even though the colours are pretty strong, you can see how one colour overlaps the other. And, um, oh good, Annette, well done. Um, one one colour interferes with the other. Can you see that? There's the, the red line continues through the black square. Now that's really interesting and it's a complete, com complete quirk or bonus rather to um, using Procyon dyes. Um, I'll show you this one as well because this one is also done, it's another example of the flower paste printing in conjunction with the stencils, paper stencil printing as well. So these are drawn circles, drawn into flower paste and then printed. And that means, look, they can be quite irregular as well. Can you see this one here? So you can get, you can get inflections in the, in the quality of the print. Often um, I find that some printing can be very blocky or very repetitive and, and obviously um, it can look maybe a little, look a little bit more commercial, but when you are able to show your your own handwriting, so to speak, through the mark making, then it becomes really individual and um, personal. Are all the scarves on linen or other fabrics? 
some are um, with us some linen um, scarves but there's also some very fine cotton um, mainly cotton scarves all natural fabrics they have to all be natural because um, well Procyon dyes work on cotton and silk and linen mainly mainly so they're, they're the preferable fiber types but let me show you another because um, these are on silk and um, this work is by Linda, Linda Stokes in Australia. So our furthest afield participant and um, Linda sold several of her pieces of work in the exhibition. It toured to different locations. Um, we showed this work at the NEC last year and then it went to Harwa in Holland. Um, Hawa is a textile school and gallery where I often work and I'm due to go there, fingers crossed, um, in July. But I'm not sure if I'm not there this July, I'll be there next one. Um, can you see this? There's a whole, I'm going to bring it really close. There's a whole load of different techniques that Linda has used on here and overlaid there is breakdown printing there is stens paper using paper stencils using the flour paste resist to get the finer lines which almost feel like they're on the top then these these fine illustrative leaves feel like they're the the top layer can you see but rather than being on cotton Linda's scarves were all on silk. They've got a lovely drape to them and they, they hang really well. The, this edge here, let me show you this edge because there's kind of negative shapes there as well, which are very beautiful. So all the overlaying of imagery that she's done has made the overall look of the scarf more complex and um, because each each layer has mixed, has visually mixed with the layer before to um, high, is this, are the scarves on exhibition? Are they returned or worn by the artist? So some of these, some of these scarves um, were sold during the exhibitions, Fiona, and um, the rest are being returned to the, the artists today. Uh, well, not today, I'm gonna parcel them up. If anybody sees anything that they like and they would like to purchase it, I will put you in touch with um, the relevant artist and um, you can work it out yourselves, okay? Uh, so that's, that's Linda, bear with me, bear with me. Then this one here is um, Jacqueline's from Canada. So another far-flung participant. And this is a very fine cotton that this is on. Can you see these are very delicate leaves in delicate colours with the, the idea of overprinting in lots of different directions, which gives the impression of an overall print, a repeated print. But actually it's um, fairly random placement print overlaid and overlaid to make the design imagery feel more complex whereas if we look at it there's a simple image of leaves that's been printed repeatedly in different directions and in different orientations okay that's jackie i've got one more i want to show you i've just got a dart over to the table and um <clears throat> right here we go this this is a super scarf. It's very simple uh, in its print, but it's beautiful, beautiful colours. And this is Christine scarf. Very wearable on a um, an off-white linen, a kind of natural linen. It's got a lovely drape to it, and it's beautifully, beautifully printed. And let me show you another. Um, Oh, which one? It's hard to choose. Look at this We're at the end of here. Look at these lovely ladies having a chat to one another 
and there will be a time again when we can chat face to face and maybe they've they've got their two meters distance apart from one another so here there's a combination of the little flowers are flower paste resist print drawn into into the into the flower paste then these large green pale green shapes would have been done with paper stencil um the ladies paper stencils their face in flower paste and then this area here that's very textured would be done in um breakdown printing so it creates a, a kind of quite organic texture there we go that um they're, they're examples of some of the scarves in that particular exhibition and um, as I said all of these participants um, are featured in the print and repeat book they all learned silkscreen printing with me and took up the challenge about 18 months ago to um, take their design ideas further and make a collection of scarves um, you can join this particular workshop at the moment it's um, you can start straight away. Um, it's a self-directed workshop now with unlimited access and all the information is on my website and you too will be able to make some beautiful, beautiful scarves. I'm sure you'll have more questions and maybe some of the participants who are watching this at the moment might want to answer some of them through the, the chat that's below the video. Um, I haven't got around to making my silver tunic yet i'm actually going to make a twirl just to make sure i get it right and i've got plenty of time i'm going to spend the rest of my day contemplating this piece and doing some more tidying up of the studio and wrapping these up and sending them back to the relevant participants so thank you everybody who was part of the print and repeat exhibition and in the book um it was blurst and it you know, I, I start these these little projects and think they're just we're going to show them at one event. And then before I know it, there's a whole collection of events and exhibitions and work ended up going on a much grander tour than maybe had planned. Claire, yes, they are beautiful scarves and they are really varied, which is a, a testament to the, the, the variety of different students on my workshops and the way that they are able to articulate techniques um, to their own ends so that they can um, use the techniques to realise their own creative vision and their own aesthetic. So there is an element of um, flexibility in the way that you can use any, any media and any process and any technique um, and Claire at the moment is on the Developing Sketchbooks workshop and hopefully those, those students who are on that workshop at the moment can see that there's connections that can be made between the design work that you're creating in Developing Sketchbooks and how that can be moved on into print as well. Can you see the back of the scarf that's over my shoulder? It looks quite similar to the front of the scarf actually. Looks like that. That's the front and that's the back. If you've seen anything that you'd like to buy, I will put you in touch with the relevant students, but you need to be quick because I'm going to parcel these up at some point this afternoon. OK, but you can get in touch with me through um, through the message facility if you feel the need. I will be back again. Today's Thursday, right? So I'm back again tomorrow at one o'clock. Um, not sure what I'm going to talk about tomorrow, but I will find something um, and I hope that you will join me. If you have enjoyed the, the daily feeds, then please share, please let other people know what I'm talking about and um, hopefully that um, they'll find something enjoyable in it too as a distraction, um, if nothing else, from, from the news, uh, from our strange day-to-day -day living um but see you tomorrow okay that's it for now i don't want to ramble all right bye